Welcome back to the Bookends YouTube channel. I'm James McGowan. I'm Jessica Faust. We are literary agents who have taken our popular blog to YouTube to discuss all things publishing, querying, the whole nine yards. Um, but if you've been following along, the past couple videos, we have been talking about how to get a job in publishing and specifically breaking down what we find are the three um, initial steps to getting a job. The resume, the cover letter, and the interview. Yeah, it's a resume. hot topic for us because we just went through this on this end of it. We did, yes. So the resume and the cover letter videos are up on our channel, and today we're talking about the interview, which is the most nerve-wracking part. <laughs> it is, and um, I mean, it's a little easier these days, maybe, because it's Zoom. That's true, but yeah. we decided to come at it at, not negatively and talk about what makes a great interview. Yeah, which, you know, I'm sure we'll talk about some things that don't make a great interview while we're doing it. But that's true. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think you can read all of the books and they can give you sample questions and questions to ask and all of those things. But, you know, so much of, well, to me, the entirety of the interview is your answers, but also just if we're a fit. Right. You know, so it's, it's, you know, in most cases, we are hiring somebody who we are going to spend eight hours a day with. So it's really just, you know, can we spend eight hours a day with them? <laughs> so for me, when I initially sit down with somebody, you know, it's, oh, hi, how are you? So nice to meet you. I expect something. Yes. That to me, the interview has started. Right. As soon as you are talking or looking at each other, it's game on. As soon as the cameras are on. Yeah, it is. And I think the best interviews feel like they're not an interview. It feels like a conversation. Yeah. If I feel like I'm trying to drag a conversation out of you, I'm exhausted. And that's what I'm going to remember when I log off. But also that feels to me indicative of how it might be to work. Am I going to have to drag productivity out of you? I don't want to do that. I got to drag productivity out of me before I drag it out of you. Yes. <laughs> so if you're, you know, prepping for the interview, prep for that initial, you know, oh, hey, you know, where are you located? Oh, I'm in, you know, Utah. Really? What's the weather like? got to be better than nice you have to know you have to know um small talk and everybody put like you said puts the onus on how am i going to answer this question or this question or what are my goals but also how do i ask someone how they're doing yeah and don't be afraid to ask back don't be afraid to make a comment right there could be like oh i saw you know in your video you guys got a lot of snow or is it still snowing there like i mean weather's great i mean i'm from minnesota we really just talk about weather all the time so but you know be ready to interact right off the bat. Don't wait for that question because this to me is one of the most important parts. Yeah, I agree. So, so some of the questions, I think I'm going to just talk about some of the questions I ask. Sure. And also tell you that there's no right or wrong answer. It's more how you answer, not well, I, I suppose you could say something really stupid. But, that's true. Um, a lot <laughs> I was of it. say, well, <laughs> that's a line. <laughs> so, you know, what I would say is be prepared to answer why. You know, in my case, it's why publishing, why agenting, but in general, why this job? Why this industry? Why this position? Why are you applying to this? Um, it's it's probably okay to say I've always loved books since I was a kid, but you better have way more than that. Well, okay. And this is, we talked about this in our last video and it kind of came to me why that, that, that doesn't really cut it for me is you've always loved books when you were a kid, but you're no longer a kid. Right. So what about books now makes you think that's what I want to do all day. That's my job. Right, what about because... you makes you the perfect fit for that? Well, and because loving books is one thing, but wanting to work in the industry is another. I mean, yes. I love to cook. Um, I love to bake. I bake cookies and like that's my de-stressor. Would I want to spend eight hours a day baking? I would not. A reader doth not make an agent. <laughs> right, right, exactly, exactly. Um, I would also avoid the writing. I'm a writer. Yes, we get that a lot, a lot. Yeah. 
that doesn't fly for me. Um, because because it, it feels like you're coming into the industry from the wrong angle. Yeah, the way it often presents is you want to learn how to get published by getting a job in publishing, not that you want a job in publishing. Now, a lot of agents are writers. James, for example. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fine. I'm not saying that you can't be a writer. It's just that that shouldn't be your why. Yeah, I think that this job is, it's hard. It has a huge learning curve and it requires someone who is fully invested. And for any hiring manager, and that's not just agenting, that's editing and, and anything in publishing really. So a lot of hiring managers or, or business owners are looking at a candidate to make sure that it's not someone who is coming in for the wrong reasons and someone who actually has a future and a career doing this job. Right. And, and I, you know, this is a good time for you to really evaluate, not just like, what's the answer to that question, but why do I want to work in publishing? Why do I want to work at an agency? You know, you know, I think you should really have an answer to that. I, I mean, for any job, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why do I want to work in advertising? Which right. would be kind of cool. We kind of do that. Not gonna lie. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> so I want to, you know, sort of to piggyback off that, it's really important to know why you applied for this job. So I want to know what about bookends inspires you. Right. And now I get when you're sending out resumes, you're not really going to fully um, research every single place. I mean, who's got that kind of time? We all there's, have I mean, there's the assumption that if you're applying for a job, you're looking for a job. And you right. can't, at some point, can't be too choosy, right? But once you get an interview, you better know who and why and where you're interviewing. Well, them. and again, if you've watched the channel, we've talked about when you send out query letters, you send out to anybody you think you would want to work with. But once that interview or that offer representation comes up, you know, your, your priorities start to shift and align. And that's when you know who you want to work with even more. So you might not go back to the other folks. So it's the same thing. Yeah. So what I would say to do is even if you only have one interview, Let's say it's with bookends. I don't know why. Let's just pick bookends randomly. Well, we are um, so look at the bookends website. Look at what bookends does. And then pick three or four other agencies that you applied through and look at what they do. And make a, like, make a list about each one of what you love about them. Now you have some comparison. So when somebody wants to know why you want to work at bookends, what on that list really stood out and made bookends special for you? So, and it doesn't mean you won't have special things about everybody, that's fine. But the question right now is bookends. Yeah, and I think too, with all these questions is the key is to knowing them and being confident with those answers because it's really easy to sound rehearsed and to sound like you're just giving me an answer you think sounds right. But we wanna hear the answer that actually comes from you. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't be afraid, you know, I would prefer you have a couple sentences not just a few words. You know, yeah. why publishing? Because I love books. <laughs> Anything else? Yeah, uh, what we're looking for engaging is your excitement too and your enthusiasm to even work this job before. I mean, nobody wants somebody who's not interested. Yeah, and honestly, my best interviews are a little bit like our YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> where we end up going off on a tangent, right. the person says something, I'm like, really, that? Oh, and then, like, you know, in a lot of them, we've gone off and talked about books or this or that, or, you know, oh, you, you know, maybe it's I took a class on this, and I, oh, really, what was the class like? I'm curious, you know, so most of the best interviews, to me, give space for that. The ones that I think are the weakest don't really give space for engagement from me. Right. A lot of places are going to, and you're going to get this in all your resume interview books, but are, are going to ask questions about, to try to get to know a little bit about your personality. You know, um, one of the things that was important to me was getting a sense of whether you're a self-starter, whether you take initiative and things like that. So be prepared to talk about highlights from previous jobs and previous experiences. So what I would do is, you don't know exactly what questions are gonna ask, but think about your previous jobs or 
you know, even school situations or whatever it is where you really feel like you excelled and be ready to talk about those. And you can pretty much twist that into anything. You know, if I said, what was one of the highlights of your previous jobs or where did you succeed or where do you think you really took an initiative and made a difference? You can have the same answer to all of those. Just be prepared. So I, that's a break. That's a braggy thing. Be ready to brag. Yeah. And I think, but that, again, every question that you ask kind of gives, it gives more than what you think it does, right? Like it gives you, gives anybody who's hiring a sense of personality, a sense of priorities, a sense of like what you pride yourself on, all of those things. So any question that you get asked, you're being asked for more than one reason. If that yeah, makes sense. absolutely. And that's why I think it's easiest to come at this like it's just a conversation, like getting to know you and less about trying to measure your own performance. Yeah. And one of the other questions you're definitely, well, definitely probably going to be asked is about a last book you've read or your favorite book. My favorite question. It's the fun question. It should be the absolute most fun question. Yeah. What I would say is if somebody asks you what your favorite book is, don't pick your favorite. Don't stress like what's my, okay, that's just, that's me coming through. I cannot pick a favorite. No, so that not. word just stymies me. Impossible. Pick a book you would be excited to talk about, but also pick a book you think, because you've done your research, would fit the um, what this agency does. But I think a really big thing is to pick a book because you know when you mention your book, there's gonna be questions. Oh, what about that book did you love? Oh, why that book? Oh, I didn't read it. Oh, what was your favorite part? I loved it too. There's, it's going to have a conversation, so be ready to talk about it. So maybe it's not your favorite book, but, or maybe it's not the last book you read, but maybe it's a book that you know you can get excited to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And that's I mean, the, the like downfall of rehearsing for this is because yeah. there's always going to be a question that comes at you like at a left field or follow-ups that you didn't rehearse for. And I feel like you get, you, you can freeze up when you do it that way. Oh, and you're totally going to forget. Someone's going to ask you the last book you read and suddenly you're going to be like, I knew what I was going to say. I have never and, read a book before in my life. <laughs> right. There are certain books that I can picture the cover. I know the author name and I can never for the life of me remember the title. Would not yeah. be one I could pick, even though I could talk about it. Yeah. Especially when covers look so much alike or it's the same author or it's bound to happen. Yeah. But you know, Sort of the, the quiz on this is not that you describe the book correctly or something like that. It's just to get a sense of what kind of books you like, but also, um, that you are and that you know how to talk about books because so much of any job in publishing is pitching, whether you work for an agency or you're an editor or you're in PR or you're in marketing, whatever position you have, your job is to talk about books. Yeah, that's a good point. I didn't even think of that. Um, I know that it's really important when, you know, when hiring and publishing, especially in editorial or in agency, that you have similar tastes as the person who's hiring you. So, you know, if I'm a mystery editor agent, which I am, I want to know that you can work with me on some of my books. So, I want to know that you're going to be interested in the same kind of books I am. That's not always something you can fully control. There are just certain areas, I, you know, I, I'm not going to work for a science fiction fantasy editor. It's just not an area that I feel comfortable in. And that's yeah. fine. But it's also, I mean, being comfortable too, but also why would you want to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can move around, but it, you know, there are certain limitations that you just might not be able to overcome. And that yeah, might like be not one of romance and working at Harlequin. Right. <laughs> hard right. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so those are sort of, I think, the key points of an interview. Oh, the questions you asked. I was just going to say, hold on. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Um, I think it shows a lot to even have questions. And I think this is your time to get to know both the person who would be hiring you um and who you would be working for what you would be doing all the questions that might not be answerable in that job description or you know emails back and forth with the person and i think that it shows a lot that you're curious about the company so i'm all for any question 
And I would say, don't hesitate to throw a question back at the interviewer. And, and, and give and take too, like the, an interview will always ask you at the end, do you have any questions? But it's fine to ask them throughout. I, I mean, that's yeah. part of what a conversation is, that back and forth. So if Jessica asks me what's my favorite book, I might throw back and ask her, well, what have you read recently that you like? Yeah, or, like even, or even just, did you read it? Have you read yeah. it? Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I think the questions you ask, this is where I think that, you know, books on getting jobs can really freak people out. I mean, yes, definitely you can ask about the job. What does the job entail? You know, that kind of thing. But this is just an interview. It's not an offer yet. So right. you can, those kinds of questions can also come later. You can also ask straight up, well, what kind of books do you like to read? You know, um, if I, you know, if one of the questions was, why do you want to work at bookends? Say, well, what do you like about bookends? What are some of your favorite things yeah. about bookends? You know, um, if there's something you really want to know, like does bookends offer a mentorship or what kind of mentorship does bookends offer? Yeah, one of our recent interns threw the book at me and she was like, well, hold on, because I know you interned at Bookends and then you stayed. So what made you stay and what are your favorite parts about it? What have you learned from the team? And I thought it was, well, she got hired. And I thought that it was one of my favorite interviews just because it made me think about that. And then it also made them feel like, yeah, that might be a good fit for me. So we were both really confident in the decision. Also, let's be honest. In real life, we all really like to think somebody cares about what we have to say. <laughs> so if you make me think that I might be interesting, right. I'm going to think this is going to be a great person to spend time with. <laughs> and like, I'm gonna... Oh, they care about me. Yes, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> they think I'm smart. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't think, you know, those are sort of the questions I think are going to come up and why. Um, I think more than right or wrong answers though, it's the engagement that you have that, that's important and that makes it memorable. Unless you have a really fat, crazy answer, then nobody will ever forget that. Yeah, and also remember that you, the, the last two videos and the last two steps, writing a resume, writing a cover letter are kind of what prepares you for this. Yeah. So those are your talking points. Everything that you've included on there, you don't have to come out of left field with new information that we didn't know. Um, right. You can, you can bolster that information, but everything you need to know, study your resume and cover letter. Those yeah. are going to be who you are, who you presented yourself as and what you're going to want to talk about. Yeah. And the other thing about the book question, because I do think that is strangely important. If you've ever watched any of our videos where we talk about what our monthly reads are, we just really love to talk about books. That is the question that could go off for like 10 minutes with anybody in publishing. Well, like the time we talked about Barack Obama's memoir and I had to edit down 15 minutes of us talking about it. It's just- Well, I mean, it was happened. like a 30 hour book. So I don't think 15 <laughs> minutes is too much. <laughs> 30 seconds an hour. I mean, that's- <laughs> deserved at least that <laughs> <You're> right <laughs> but yeah so i think that there's it's there's a lot of pressure and there's a lot of reasons to be nervous about it but i think the best thing you can do is be prepared but also be prepared for stuff you're not prepared for does that make sense like be prepared yeah. to not be prepared yeah, absolutely. yeah. just because just know who you are yeah go in the best thing you can do is go in knowing the highlights of what makes you amazing because that's what we want to know. There you go, Monday motivation. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope that was helpful. Um, don't forget to watch all three videos if you are applying for a job in publishing. We hope that all of them sort of help you get your dream job. Um, if you have any questions about the interview process, feel free to drop them below. But we hope you like and subscribe, and we see you back here next time. Good luck. <laughs>